well it is the start of another weekly vlog um it is monday and it is probably about half one quarter to two ish in the afternoon i have been up i've had a shower i have been for a walk to get some lunch um and i have been filming so i wrapped up last week's vlog i've just filmed my february plan with me and now i'm just filming this clip for the beginning of this vlog um i do plan to film a unboxing slash haul as well hopefully today um so yeah i am pretty tired i'm not gonna lie i don't know what's wrong with me i cannot stop being tired at the moment no matter how much sleep i get um i'm constantly tired but this week, I don't fully know what I'm planning on reading. It's going to be a busy week. Tonight, I've got Moana watch along with patrons because it was meant to be on Thursday, but after my really bad anxiety attack on panic attack on Wednesday, I wasn't feeling up for being live. So I've got Moana watch along this evening. Thursday, I have the priest live show uh, with becca and sandra and then friday i have a funeral and then i'm actually going down to jade's for the weekend on friday so it's a very very busy week obviously wednesday and thursday i'm working and today and tomorrow i'm busy working on youtube stuff so incredibly busy week um i'm feeling very overwhelmed and a little bit stressed <laughs> i'm not gonna lie uh so reading wise i'm hoping that i can get some time in to read fingers crossed i'm trying to get through my editing as quickly as i not my editing my filming as quickly as i can so i can get as much of my editing done today as i can so that i can maybe read tomorrow um so fingers crossed i can get some reading done but right now i'm currently reading how to sell a haunted house by grady hendrix this is a horror it's a haunted house horror obviously i'm following louise and mark we're following louise as our main character mark is her brother they've just found out their parents have died in a car accident louise lives with her daughter she's a single parent and mark is <sighs> Louise deems him the black sheep of the family, but by the sounds of things, she was a little bit of the black sheep of the family. He was very molly cuddled and uh, she hated it. She was quite independent and therefore her parents didn't worry about her as much, but it meant that Mark got everything while she felt like she got nothing. Um, so her parents have just passed away and obviously they're going through the process of she's, have to, she's had to come back to... Uh, Charleston which is where their house is to sort everything out with Mark like do the funeral and everything so she's left her daughter with her ex and um it's at this point now that we're getting the haunting it turns out that her mum used to make like puppets and dolls and things like that and I think they're going to be the haunted element of this so little bit terrifying i'm not gonna lie we've had just just had an incident with the puppets um and it's i'm, I'm not a fan <laughs> i'm a fan of the book i'm a fan of the writing i'm a fan of the horror I, i'm not a fan of puppets <laughs> or dolls i used to collect porcelain dolls fun fact i have so many of them in my parents well what's now my brother's loft but it used to be in my parents loft so many porcelain dolls and when i was a kid i didn't find them creepy now i do i can't even go up there and look at them to get rid of them in, in all honesty i think my sister-in-law might have to just chuck them in a skip and get rid because i can't i just cannot do it to myself um i find them terrifying it's amazing how when you're a kid certain things you love clowns porcelain dolls stuffed animals things like that um puppets and as you get older, I don't know if it's the movies that do it, to, do it to us or the literature. I don't know what it is that does it to us. It's probably the movies and literature. Um, I hate clowns. I hate them. Ever since watching It for the first time. And he made me watch it about eight or nine years ago. In fact, it was longer than that. It was about 11 or 12 years ago. And he fell asleep and I was absolutely livid. Um, and I haven't been able to look at clowns the same. I can't go to the circus anymore. I used to love the circus. I can't go to the circus anymore. I will cross the road if I see a clown in the street. Like, even just a normal circus clown. Not, you know, it. Pennywise or whatever. Hate them. Hate them. Not a fan. Um, so, same thing with porcelain dolls and puppets and stuff. So, yeah. So, I am reading this one at the moment. I have just been listening to it while I've been filling it in my Feb plan with me and i'm now on page 123 i got to page 91 last night i'm just trying to split my pages up so i can fill in my diary with how many pages i've been reading um so i am hoping to make more progress in this today i doubt i'm gonna finish it i'm not gonna lie i don't know how long i've got left of the audio three hours and 42 minutes it's not too long but it would mean 
I mean, I could finish it tomorrow, potentially. Um, so this is what I have lined up for this week. I don't know what else I'm going to plan on reading. I should start with my Feb TBR. I'm hoping to obviously finish that during January, which we've still got today and tomorrow left of January. But I was thinking of maybe trying to get through Josie and... Uh, Josie the Tiger and the Fish, sorry, which is a manga which was sent to me from Yen Press. So I'm thinking about maybe trying to get through that because it is a chunky one, um, but it might be a nice, easy read for me to get through. And I've been wanting to pick up some manga for, a hot, manga for a hot minute. And I feel like now might be a good... I don't know if it is a good time or not, but I feel like now might be a good time to pick up European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlemen by Theodora Goss. It's incredibly chunky, but my thought process is that I have a four hour to four and a half hour journey to Jade's on Friday. Could be longer than that because it's a Friday. I'm going to be setting off later than I usually do because I've got to go to a funeral first. Um, so I can listen to this whilst I'm driving. I usually prefer to listen to music while I'm driving, um, especially on such a long trip. And sometimes I do half and half. But this is such a fun read that I feel like it will be a great audio book for driving. Um, and a four to four and a half hour journey will get me at least eight hours if not look further into the book so i'll listen to it on two and a half speed so maybe 10 hours into the book um so i don't know we'll see what happens with that i i really want to start it i really do want to pick it up and get it started i this is what i was planning on picking up next after i'd finished priest but while i was already part way through how to sell a haunted house and we still had two days of the month left i thought i might try and get through it so um, I do think this might be next along with uh, Josie the Tiger and the Fish. Um, so we'll see whether or not I get through these. The only issue I have with starting this is that if I don't finish it by Monday, it's Polathon on Monday. So I will have to put it down and come back to it after Polathon. Um, although, yeah, because I do have then the four hour trip back from Jade's on Tuesday. But I'll probably, there's a good put chance that I'll end up listening to one of the audiobooks for one of the Polar books, obviously, rather than this we'll see we'll see these are possibilities though i do really want to pick up the last flower bride as well i am all over the place right now but i have the audiobook for it and it doesn't actually come out till 16th of feb so i really wanted to pick it up before it came out but maybe i could pick it up that week um so i don't know we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what i'm in the mood for but i'll keep you posted as we're going um so yeah i better get on because i've still got so much work to do i still got another whole ass video to edit uh, sorry, film, and then three videos to edit. Um, so, I'm very tired. Today is not the day. But we push on. Uh, so, I will check back in with you and I've got an update for you. and it is 10 to 10 it's cowboy time i have gotten up earlier than normal today um i was discussing this with jade yesterday after pulling my patreon oracle card um for this week and it was space and it was going on about what do you feel like you have a void of in your life right now like what's taking up space in your life that you wish it wasn't what do you need more of so and i said to her time and she said you don't need more time you have the same 24 hours in the day that everybody else does she said you need routine and um that is due to a lack of self-discipline so she was entirely correct i need more self-discipline in the order for me to have a routine so i've got more time in the day um again I have the same time as everybody else. I'm just not using it to its full potential. So this morning she hounded me at quarter past eight until I got out of bed. <laughs> um, so I've gotten up, I've got ready, I've curled my hair because I am going to film the final book support group announcement today. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. Me and Jade had an awesome brainstorming session last night and it was really, really good. So I'm very excited to do the announcement video for that. Um, 
which I think will go up after this vlog. It will go up on the Thursday after this vlog goes up on the Tuesday. That's my aim. So, wanted to come on and give you a quick reading update because I have been reading. Um, my aim today is to finish How to Sell a Haunted House. The other reason I wanted to get up so early is so that I could film the final book support group and then spend the rest of the day finishing this book. I'm currently on page 159 and I am still enjoying it. I ended up putting it down last night because I was doing the Moana watch along with my patrons and then I did decide to pick up something else on the basis that this was creeping me out and it was dark. So if I finish this this afternoon that would be perfect. Um, so that's my plan after I have filmed the final book support group. I'm, like I say, having a good time with it. It's just creeping me the fuck out. It's puppets and dolls and I don't like that. So it's doing its job, you know? <laughs> so the book that I did decide to pick up last night was European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewomen by Theodora Goss. I did mention yesterday that I was probably going to try and pick this up this week. And I did, I didn't get too far, but I did manage to get 54 pages in. So... Um, I've made a little bit of progress. I'm loving being back with these women. I'm just having such a good time with it. I love this story. We follow in the first one, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, where we're following Mary Jackal, and she ends up coming across these other monstrous women, essentially. Um, this is obviously set in the Victorian era, so it is historical fiction, it is fantasy, it is sci-fi, and it's very, very good. Uh, we also follow uh, Diana Hyde, Catherine Moreau, Beatrice Rappuccini, Justine Frankenstein, and in this one we're actually being introduced to um, Lucinda Van Helsing. Uh, and these are obviously daughters of monstrous men that have been in history throughout the years. Um, we also have uh, Dr. Watson Sherlock Holmes in here as well, which I really enjoy. I love Sherlock Holmes. I have read a few of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories, and I just enjoy the element of him being in here as well as uh, Dr. Watson. So having a great time so far. The thing that I love the most about this, and I would highly recommend if you're picking this up, try the audiobook. Um, basically, you have instances where the other girls will interrupt. Mary's writing a book, um, and that's the whole point of this. She's writing the book and telling us the stories of these uh, monstrous gentlewomen and the girls will constantly interrupt her they'll be like that's not how it goes <laughs> like why would you say such a thing why would you embarrass me like that and I just find it really really funny so I'm having a good time glad that I decided to pick this one up thank you so much to Stacy for putting this one on my TBR I really liked um the I can't remember what this is called now. Uh, and it says, for all the girl monsters, may they conquer the world. Um, so I'm very, very excited. Having a good time. Once I've finished How to Sell a Haunted House, if I've got time, I will dip back into this one. I'm obviously going to Andy's after he's finished work today. So um, I do need to try and finish How to Sell a Haunted House before then. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably take it with me, to be honest, so that I can maybe do a little bit of reading tomorrow evening as well while I'm at his. Um... But that's where I'm up to. I thought I would just come on and give you a quick update, let you know how my reading is going. It is going, uh, which is good news. Um, so yeah, having a great time. Up bright and early so that I can get some filming done and then I need to pack some orders later, which I can do while listening to How to Sell a Haunted House as well. Um, but yeah, having a great time. Work's going well. This week has been a busy one already. It's only Tuesday morning. <laughs> I've already posted a Instagram post on final book support group and literature. I could do a doing one for my own Instagram today. Um, so we'll see if I get something taken for that. And that's where I'm up to with life. So I'm going to go so I can get final book support group filmed and I will check back in with you later. Tuesday. It's now quarter past three and I've just finished How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. This book was balls to the wall batshit crazy. Honest to god it was f fucking mental. <laughs> I saw one person review it as this was fucking bananas and honestly I would absolutely agree. Um 
it was a ride let me tell you obviously the house is haunted it's puppets and dolls um we're following siblings louise and mark their parents pass away but they're estranged siblings they don't speak they don't particularly get on and we end up going through the history of their family and the history of their lives and their relationship um which explains a lot about why they are estranged and stuff but this book is fucking mental <laughs> I shit my pants i don't like puppets i don't like dot creepy dolls um so it did its job i enjoyed it it was fucking wild though i've got absolutely no idea how to rate it so we're gonna do it together i've got my laptop here i use core pile which is g's rating system if you don't know what it is i will leave a link to g's um and now like announcement video for core pile in the description box down below feel free to go and check it out um so we end up rating core pile is short for characters atmosphere writing plot intrigue logic and enjoyment so and you rate out of 10 and it gives you an overall rating so for characters i really enjoyed louise and mark as characters i liked that there was a section throughout the book in which we got mark's side of the story and if you listen to the audiobook it's actually a male narrator for him rather than the female narrator putting his voice on um so i enjoyed them as characters um it freaked me out that the kid ended up being brought into the creepiness a little bit and i think that's obviously to do with the atmosphere but again i enjoyed that aspect of it so i did like the characters so i am going to give them a nine uh the atmosphere was out of this world it's going to get a 10. i really enjoyed the writing style i always enjoy grady hendrix's writing style i've previously read my best friend's exorcism and horror store and i think i've given them both three stars but i think i entirely underestimated what exactly those books can do um i did not enjoy horror store as much as my best friend's exorcism but i think that book should be a four star and i do want to reread it at some point um but i think his writing style is very I, I don't know his stories are very unique and on that basis i think sometimes like in the past when i haven't been uh more of a horror reader than i am now and haven't been much into the genre as i am now um i think it's just gone over my head exactly what he was trying to do and basically his writing style and his stories are always very campy semi-comedy horror novels there is a comedy element to this like i wasn't specifically there was a couple of times where i was laughing out loud but i wasn't specifically laughing out loud if you know what i mean there was a handful of times but it's not like the oh my god this is the funniest thing i've ever read type comedy it's the on the nose comedy like everybody knows that puppets are fucking terrifying and i don't know i just feel like it takes the piss a little bit out of the horror element of puppets and i just really enjoy that i think it's very well done so the writing is going to get a nine as well the plot and then the plot was good um it was good i did there was an like ever so slightly towards the end where i just kind of wished it would wrap to, wrap up it kind of went on a little bit but i understand why it did um i'm gonna give the plot an eight that could bring the rating down a little bit um intrigue i really did want to know what was going to happen at the end i'm not gonna lie we're gonna give that a nine logic it was fucking mental absolutely mental but i can't rate it low on the basis that it was a completely fucking mental book like the logic behind it was entirely bizarre i mean it all made sense in the end uh, how you can how you can make sense out of a haunted puppet i'll never know but it all came it all came full circle towards the end so the logic it made sense towards the end you know um and then my enjoyment i did enjoy it a nine for enjoyment so it got a nine for logic as well so it's ended up with a five star i'm not surprised to be honest i think i just found that i i in my brain i was like i just don't fully know how i feel about this book it's completely bananas it is entirely bananas all the bananas but i enjoyed it it was good 
it was very cleverly done and I really did enjoy it. It gave me the creep factor. The atmosphere was entirely there. Really did enjoy the writing style. I thought the characters were great. Um, you start off the book disliking one of the characters and you end it kind of, you know, cheering for them both. And I just really enjoyed that element of it i think i enjoyed the element of it as well as a big sister myself louise is a, is the oldest sibling and i think i enjoyed the element of myself and my brother have never kind of been argumentative we've always been very very close from being kids we've been best friends um even up until this point and so i didn't relate in the sense that you know estranged siblings i didn't relate in that sense but i do know friends of mine who don't get on with their siblings as much as like i get on with my brother so i see it from that side of things but i think it's just the whole i i really felt for louise and how she was wanting to do the best by her brother all the time and uh, despite the differences that they had and i just related to her so much in that sense it was good it's definitely worth the five star for sure um it was very very good so yeah i have finally finished that now and i think that's my 12th book of the month finished um and my sixth five star i think as well one two three four five six yeah six five star of the month um so smashed it i think that's my 12th book finished anyway yeah because i've got a dnf um so noise i'm happy with that I am happy with that. So that is January wrapped up essentially because I'm, there's no way I'm going to finish European travel for the gentle, monstrous gentle women today at all. I'm only 54 pages in, but I'm going to continue on with that one. I think I may even start uh, Josie the Tiger and the Fish as well and start making some progress in this. I think just to break things up a little bit. Um, but yeah, five stars for How to Sell a Haunted House. That book was. so crazy i feel like i need to discuss it with someone <laughs> if somebody's read it can you chat to me um bizarre very bizarre i had a good time though uh so yeah i'm gonna go and maybe pick up that manga i might watch a bit of tv for a bit instead i don't know i'm supposed to go into andy's but he's had a really shit day at work so i've just said to him if you want to leave it tonight just let me know so I should hear from him soon whether or not like what he wants to do um but yeah i'll check back in with you and i've got another update for you hello it's still tuesday quite a few updates for you today but i'm getting a lot done i have just read my first february book of february in january <laughs> this is the second time i've done this now because i did this in december but um i just finished josie and the tiger and the fish um by Seiko Tanabe and this was adorable i gave it four and a half stars it's following josie and also suneo um, he basically works many, many jobs and what he's trying to do is save up enough money so that he can go to college in Mexico and um, he basically wants to be like a professional diver but he wants to see the world. So he's trying to save up money to do this. He's got about two jobs I think and then he ends up accidentally one day bumping into a woman in a wheelchair. Um, she is 
basically careening down the road towards the towards the main road and her grandmother's somebody's bumped into her and her grandmother's accidentally let go of the wheelchair and she's gone flying so uh he accidentally bumps into them they go home together grandmother josie and and Suneo, and um, basically grandmother offers him a job as a caretaker for Josie, uh, and then it just kind of goes from there. She's quite standoffish with him because she doesn't think that he understands um, with everything that's going on with her and stuff like that, and they bond over the ocean and fish and her paintings and each other's need to want to see the world for different reasons. Um, she, her grandmother doesn't let her go out much because these things keep happening and um, basically he opens her eyes to the world and uh, things just kind of go from there and it was really, really good, very beautifully done. I really, really loved it. There were many pages where there wasn't even any writing on it, there wasn't any dialogue between the two characters or anything. It was just very beautifully done and I gave it four and a half stars. If I gave half stars, I've given it four on uh, Goodreads. But I really enjoyed it. Thanks again to Yen Press for sending me this one. So anyway, I've come up to bed. It is about 25 past 8 and I have mentioned previously that normally I would be at Andy's on a Tuesday but he's had a really bad day at work. Um, so I did say to him we would just leave it and see how he's feeling in a bit but I think he's gone to sleep because I haven't heard from him for several hours now. So I've had some tea and now I feel like I want to come up to bed. Obviously I was up very early this morning which I'm not used to. Um, so I want to come up to bed and do a bit of reading, maybe watch a bit of telly. So I haven't decided which one yet, or maybe both. I have brought up Monstrous Gentlewomen with me, it's on the bed. But I am debating whether or not to start a non-fiction, which are on the top of the bookshelf you're currently sitting on. Um, I'm just thinking that it might be nice to have a non-fiction read going on in the background as like a bedtime read maybe so i've been reading a f uh, not reading i've been watching a fuck ton of true crime so i'm thinking i want like a true crime book and i do have a couple so i've got the five so i've got the five the untold lives of w the women killed by jack the ripper by hallie rubenhold and i've also got the fact of a body by alexandria mazon Marzano Lesnovich. Um, so I'm undecided which one to read. I just, my brain needs to double check. I feel like this or this could be a Patreon one. <laughs> okay, yeah, so the five is actually the April, May and June non-fic pick for my Patreon. So um, maybe I will start this one instead the fact of a body i'm in my true crime era i don't know what's up with me i've been binging all of the true crime series on netflix paramount plus um and disney uh, not disney uh amazon prime so i think i might go for this one uh this is following the author themselves who is asked to work on a death row hearing for convicted murderer and child molester ricky langley but she finds herself thrust into a tangled story of his childhood as she digs deeper and deeper into the case she realizes that despite their vastly different circumstances something in his story is unsettling uncannily familiar the fact of a body is both an enthralling memoir and a groundbreaking heart-stopping investigation into how the law is personal composed of individual stories and proof that range it, uh sorry uh, that arriving at the truth is more complicated and powerful than we could ever imagine fairly certain it was caitlin that recommended this one to me in fact yes it was because she sent it to me um so so I feel like this one could be an interesting one. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through this. I don't anticipate finishing it this week unless it's absolutely, you know, ridiculously enthralling and I just stay up all night and read it. But um, I'm going to pro possibly do this. I'm going to see how it goes, having a different type of book for bedtime essentially um i don't come up to bed and read a great deal i'm not gonna lie i tend to come up to bed and put the telly on or play games on my phone and then i'm awake till like three four o'clock in the morning so maybe this might stop me from doing that um so we'll see but yeah i think i'm gonna give this a go i will keep you posted on how i'm doing and at the end of the week i'll let you know you know how far through it i got but i'm gonna give that a go i think so you know tuesday and i finished two books this week already pretty proud of myself i'm not gonna lie um but no more progress has been made on monstrous gentle women i'm wondering whether i'm on page 54 and i'm wondering whether to listen to that for a little bit get myself over the 100 page mark just so i feel a bit better about it um and then 
dive into the non-fix. So I'm gonna get in bed, see how I feel, and I will keep you posted. Hello, it's Thursday. Um, I do have a couple parcels here, but this I've already started editing this vlog and it's already reasonably long, so I'm gonna try and keep it quick. But I do have a little bit of a reading update. Nothing on uh, Monstrous Gentle Women. Still on page 54. But I did start the fact of a body the other night on Tuesday night um, while I was at home. And I got to part two, which is page 83. I'm really enjoying this. This is very good. I keep forgetting that it's non-fiction, <laughs> in all honesty. Um, we're following two different timelines. So we are following Louisiana 1992 and then we are following New Jersey 1983. So we're following Alexandria in 1983 with her family, etc. And then we're following um, her kind of going down this route of looking into this serial killer. Was it a serial killer? Uh, killer and child molester Rick Lang Ricky Langley so we're following that story then as well so we start off with this missing little boy um, who straight away we know exactly what's happened but we follow the whole process of the police trying to find out what's happened to this boy um, and some um, interviews between Alexandria I don't know if they're between her and Ricky Langley actually. I don't I think she's just managed to get hold of the transcripts, but she's sharing some of those with us. Um so it's very, very interesting. And then as far as like in the past with her is concerned, I don't want to give anything away, I don't want to spoil anything, but following her family life and it's not as idyllic as you'd like to think it is um there is a lot going on so if you're thinking of picking this one up i mean obviously it is about a murder um it's the murder of a young boy at least as far as i'm up to that's what's going on right now but obviously child molestation sexual assault on a child um so it's it's very much surrounding children with the whole dark stuff so just be wary of that going in but so far I'm really enjoying it it's very fast paced and i'm really having a good time with it um i am planning on picking that up this evening when i get into bed and then we do have a parcel here from blackwells why is this so big i don't understand is it because i've ordered it from blackwells so it's the american version finley donovan jumps the gun look how big this is compared to the normal a normal book just what's the need i'm gonna have to uh replace this with a different one um but i obviously needed it in paperback because i don't have hardbacks of the other two so this is the third in the finley donovan series i am planning on reading it this month um but i will have to get myself a normal copy either when it comes out or like now if it is out in paperback but glad i've got that despite the size of it and then we do have the fairy loot ya box i don't know if i think this is this december's let me get everything out they keep putting the card at the bottom of the box now so i have to like fish everything out before i can get to the card okay so this is oh it's january's hidden world um is the theme um we do have Jack and Evangeline on the, it's upside down, on the tarot cards from Once Upon a Broken Heart, which I have not read because I know full well I'm gonna DNF it because of the writing. We've got a sleep mask inspired by our book of the month. Very cute. I do quite enjoy those. I never use them, but I enjoy them nonetheless. We've got a We Hunt the Flame scrunchie. This is really cute, very nice design. Um, nice little scrunchie. I don't tend to wear these often, I'm not gonna lie. They end up sitting in my cupboard, so. <laughs> Uh, then we do have a pin, a Kadar pin, which is inspired by the Stardust Thief, which I haven't read yet, but obviously I have a copy on my shelves from Fairy Loot. Uh, ooh, very pretty pin. Very nice pin indeed. Um, and then we do have the first in the new collection of Magical Tones. This is volume one, so it does come in a box. Recently, I haven't been able to open boxes without ripping them. Oh, I did all right there. <laughs> nice. Uh, this is the A Beginner's Guide to Portal Magic. Very pretty indeed. I do like this design. Very nice. Uh, these do come in handy. I put like the tarot cards and bookmarks in it and stuff like that. So they do come in handy indeed. And then we have the book from Fairy Loot. So let's get all the bits out. 
We have the matching bookmark to the spoiler card. We've got the fairy scoop, which I'll flick through in a minute. And then we do have the dear reader letter with the illustrated artwork as well. Very nice illustrated artwork. And we have the book, which is Spice Road by Maya Abram, I think. Um, this is a pretty cover. Whoever controls the spice controls the kingdom itself. Very nice green sprayed edges with some stencil art on the end. Oh, that's pretty end papers. I think we've got some artwork underneath the dust jacket. Here are the end papers. The book is signed by the author. More end papers. Oh, we have a reversible dust jacket. Look at that, how pretty. And on the underneath, on the naked dust jacket, it looks like this. Naked dust jacket, naked hardcover. Let's try that one. <laughs> okay so this says in the hidden desert city of koala secret spice magic awakens the affinities of those who drink the mystera tea with her affinity for iron 17 year old imani can wield a dagger like no other and for that she has gained a reputation as the next greatest shield battling jinn ghouls and other monsters spreading across the sands but ever since her brother was discovered stealing their nation's coverted spice a tale a telltale sign of magic a, a telltale sign of magical obsession and disappeared into the deadly forbidden wastes imani's reputation has been in tatters despite athir's betrayal there isn't a day that goes by that she doesn't grieve him then imani discovers signs her brother may be alive and spreading their nation's magic to outsiders desperate to find him and to protect him she joins the mission sent to hunt him down accompanied by tahar a powerful beast her, who enthralls and en enrages her in equal measure imani soon discovers that many secrets lie beyond the forbidden wastes and in her own heart caught between her duty to the nation and her love for her brother imani must decide where her loyalties lie before it's too late interesting it's a chonker nearly 500 pages uh but interesting the fairy scoop as always does have an interview with the author there is going to be a read-along starting on february 20th um, and the next month's theme, which is February, will be Morally Grey. Uh, in this box, you can expect, expect items inspired by From Blood and Ash, Once Upon a Broken Heart, These Violent Delights, and The Black Witch. Um, we, we're thrilled to reveal that one of these items will be a foiled ceramic mug featuring art uh, by Avondel Art, and that one of the items will be a foil print by Rosie Thorns88. Our featured book of the month is Gotham meets Strange Dreamer, where a cowardly girl finds herself at the centre of a conspiracy in a city where nightmares come to life. Interesting. I read Strange Dreamer, I wasn't a huge fan, but I love like Gotham City and the Batman world and all of that stuff. So um intrigued indeed. So yeah, nice box from Fairy Loot there. I'm hoping that I can cut that down because this clip has been nine minutes so far. Um so that is everything I need to update you on and show you. I need to start packing because I'm going to Jade's tomorrow, but I've got a funeral first. Um, tomorrow's going to be a busy day. My dad reminded us as well today that it's actually going to be a year since my grandpa passed away tomorrow. I don't know what's up with tomorrow as a whole. It feels like a Friday 13th. It's ridiculous. But there's actually another funeral that my mum um, was going to go to in the morning of one of my nan's friends but she can't make it obviously because we've got the funeral in the afternoon and my mum's got to come down from um not end so she can't make it to both unfortunately but two funerals my grandpa's anniversary of his passing it's just it's going to be a weird day tomorrow and i'm just wondering how exhausted i'm going to be when i got when i get to jade's i'm hoping that seeing her will perk me up a bit so we'll see and then obviously i have the trip to her so I am excited. I'm just dreading the first portion of tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, I am gonna go because I need to get. I need to start packing. I have to get out of these clothes so I can put them in the washing machine and hopefully get them dry before I go tomorrow. Um, so I will check back in with you, and I've got another update for you. I'm mad about this. I'm not gonna lie. It's really annoyed me. I should have known really that getting it from. It was just cheaper, which makes no sense whatsoever because it's bigger. Anyway, it is what it is. I'll see you in a bit. Hello. Good 
morning. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's Saturday. I haven't filmed anything for days. Um, it's been a really busy week and yesterday I was going to film a little bit before I came down and set off but I honestly was knackered from the funeral and stuff so I didn't. And then I got to Jade's and then we were hanging out so we just didn't film anything last night. But we're on our way into Ipswich. Guess where we're going? Church. Close. Wow. I don't know about you, books are my religion. And literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you said Waterstones, you would be correct. <laughs> if you said Dial Lane, you would you probably would be. also be correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're gonna go book shopping. I, I have not decided yet It's gonna be based off of my haul whether or not I do this as a separate video or whether I just chuck it in here I am trying That guy's got his L plates stuck to his car with duct tape. Are they not magnetic? That's what I thought <laughs> That's not duct tape at all, it's parcel tape <laughs> I feel like that makes it worse Parcel tape your L plates to your car. It's how is that even working though? Because parcel tape is terrible on paper. Never mind on Never friggin' mind on metal. Car, yeah. Um. For those of you that constantly wonder how I end up so distracted when I'm with Jade, Don't that was your answer. Like I'm the problem. <laughs> you are the problem. It's you. Hi. You're the problem. It's you. I'm pretty sure that's not how that song goes. It isn't, but it it works. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're gonna go book shopping and then we're gonna spend that afternoon reading. Um, I think. Because I have a lot of progress to make in uh, Monstrous Gentle Women, because I've made 15 pages this morning, that's it. I'm 69 pages in. Uh, so I haven't read any more of A Fact of a Body and now I feel really awkward about holding this camera up and filming because there was quite a few people outside a minute ago. Um, so yeah, we want to make progress on reading today. Um, so that's the plan, book shopping and reading. So I will update you probably when we're back at Jade's as to whether or not I'm doing a separate vlog video or... She's so pretty. Or I'm keeping it in here. Um, so yeah, we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> If the wind could spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars mm. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy To the ones who lost their hope Get us both in because why not? And Finn bags here as well. Finny, have you seen the camera? Finn. Finn, what's this? Take that. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? <laughs> Can he have it? Yeah. You might just be sleeping in bits of shredded paper. Yeah. Um, we are back from Ipswich Town Centre and book shopping. We ended up in town for like four hours. I know. I, yeah. It was such Good a long Good job I didn't time. pick that car park then. Yeah, for sure. I wasn't keeping track of how long we were there for. We did go to Dial Lane and then we also went to Waterstones, New Look and then the Crystal Shops. Yeah. And we had a really good time. However, we were both pretty reserved with I our know. book shopping. Yeah. Like, before we went in, you were saying to your vlog, oh, I might make it another video. 
No. No. It's, it's in this video. Um, uh, to be fair, I did say that I need to have a rule that if I'm not going to read the book within the next two months, I can't buy it. We didn't even need to But we didn't need to, that, no. No. To be, they didn't have what, what we were, we're looking, looking for. for. Yeah. I wanted the new Finlay Donovan, which... Um, that reminds me, I should just order The Witch in the Tsar. That's what Jade wanted. Um, which I obviously, you've already seen, I've already hauled Finlay Donovan, but I didn't want the massive American paperback. So I'm going to try and send that back and get the normal UK paperback. But what I did get from Dial Lane was this US copy of Loveless by Alice Oseman. Dude, that's my toe. Um, I love this cover. And every time we've gone in Dial Lane, I've looked at it and debated whether or not to pick it up. And I have read, it turns out I have read Loveless already. And I really did enjoy it. So... Um, I got myself all confused between Loveless and um, Solitaire. Solitaire, yeah. Uh, so I'm really glad that I managed to get this. And then I also did get from Waterstones then, I got Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hebert. It's her new book. I think that this is actually um, either New Adult or YA. But I love Talia, Talia Hibbert. Hibbert. Yeah, YA. Really? yeah. But I love her writing style, so, and it's got like cute little Finn bits likes like this. The lemon. Tastes nice, that Finn. Um, so, yeah, I picked this one up as well. So, that's those are the two books that I hauled. This is the smallest shopping, book shopping trip I've ever done, I think, ever. Yeah. One book from each book. Yeah. And that was it. Um, <laughs> I did get some stickers from the crystal shop um and then a dress from new look yeah and um, a tote bag and my tote bag also downstairs damn it so yeah so we're back now we're gonna do a bit of reading but we are gonna help we i'm gonna help jade well first of all decide what she's gonna read over yeah. the next couple of days before polathon on monday and then um pick some other books for something else that hasn't been announced yet so many projects honestly. yeah um so that's what we're gonna do so i'm gonna go leave this a short and sweet update uh so jade can do hers and Finn can continue stuck? eating his paper is that stuck to you were you concerned <laughs> uh so yeah we'll check back in with you later i did manage to read 15 pages of gentle women monstrous gentle women this morning but that's it. Other we will than that, be doing a lot more reading this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. I am hoping to get through a massive chunk of that book today. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, so, yeah. Check back in with you later. <laughs>
it's Sunday. It's 20 to midnight. It's only just Sunday. <laughs> it's Sunday evening. I'm very tired. We've had a lovely day today. We we did some shopping this morning. Oh my god, I forgot we did that. Yeah, that was all this morning. That was so long ago. <laughs> yeah, we went to Asda and Pets at Home and then um, BMC, which is a cake shop here in Ipswich, which I love going to. We came back, had some lunch, took Finn to the beach. Um, that you didn't know was here. <laughs> that I did not know was here. You've had a load of B-roll of that. And then since we got back, Jade made a Sunday roast, which I got a little clip of as well for my oh, vlog. Did you? Um, and I've been reading my book. I finished my book just now. Who saw it coming? <laughs> who predicted that? I'll tell you who. Me. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. You had doubts. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your eyes. I can read you. You didn't think she was going to do it. A lot of people had doubts, including me. So I've basically read um, 650 pages in two days. And that's two days with me. Yep. Like, I feel like 650 pages at home in two days would be less impressive. Because mm. you're on your own. Yeah. But like the fact that we've actually been doing things. Yeah, we've we been were together. We were in Ipswich Town Centre for four hours yesterday. And then we've been out and about for probably about the same time today. Yeah. Before I even picked the book up. So. And both days we've like sat and had dinner together, not listening to audiobooks or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Pretty proud of myself, I'm not going to lie. I haven't run it through core power yet, but I reckon it's probably going to get a four. I didn't enjoy this as much as the first one, but I did still enjoy it. I just think it was a little bit too long. And I did say to Jade at one point that I got sick of Catherine keep telling us she's a puma. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> um, I just got sick of her repeating it, so... But otherwise, I really enjoyed it. I think it was great um i am very intrigued for the next one though and i'm glad that i've read this i was a bit annoyed with myself the other day that i picked this up as my first book for february but i am glad that i've read this now because it means that i'm going to get a break for the rest of the month before i pick the last one up in march for final book so um oh, is that what you're gonna do yeah okay. that's why also, i wasn't you've got the biggest book on your tbr done yeah, because the other one is Dragon Republic, but I think that's a bit shorter than this. I, I mean, think, taller. I think so, yeah. Because I've got I think the, it is shorter. I've got the hardback, but um, I do think it's shorter in page count, so. But yeah. Proud of myself, so I reckon it's probably going to get a four star, but yeah, really happy. Really happy. I haven't read any more of The Fact of a Body. I'm still at the same point, because I haven't been reading that before, because I've been trying to get through this. But um, this week I have finished. How to Sell a Haunted House, which I gave five stars. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that felt like ages ago. Because I finished it on Tuesday. I finished Josie, the Tiger and the Fish, which I gave four stars. And I fi finished European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman, which I think is going to get four stars as well. And I've started The Fact of a Body, so... That's a lot of reading in It is, yeah. How would it? No, yeah. But this is my first read finished for Feb because the other two I finished in January. Because obviously Monday and Tuesday were January. Oh yeah. Wow. I know. Time. It's been a really long week. Weird. Um, so yeah, but I'm going to... I think that's it. Do I have anything else to say? I was chuckling every now and then with this. I don't know if you heard me. No, I was probably too busy <laughs> flailing myself. I was, uh, yeah, I did find myself chuckling once or twice. I think I've actually tabbed one of the things up as well. Oh, it was going on about me in a study and there was a big quote about how her study looks and it was just, I was obsessed with it. I kind of want to write it down. If I'd have been writing and tabbing, I would have um, highlighted it, but I wasn't. But yeah, it was nice. I just find... Um, Diana hilarious. I think she might be my favourite character. 
think she's great. She's batshit crazy. Really like her. I have no idea who Diana is. <laughs> Diana Hyde. Uh -huh. Yeah. That clarifies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, update as well. You know, I opened the Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun at home the other day and it was a tall American paperback and I was like, oh, it must just be a Blackwell thing. Well, I went and ordered it from Amazon and it came today here at Jade's same fucking size i i don't know what headline i've decided to do here because um I'm a, I'm a little bit maybe unnecessarily pissed off uh but i'm livid so i'm taking the other one back tomorrow from amazon i'm gonna drop that off and it's gonna be sent back and i'm gonna get my money back for that one and then i'm gonna send the blackwells one back as well and i've gone and bought them in hardback off. Because that's the rational solution. Off wordery. Well, if Headline aren't going to make the normal UK paperback, I can't go and have a US paperback next to it when I have the it's other two It's not the UKs. US paperback, though. It's the size of a US paperback. But it is a UK paperback. It just looks like a US paperback. I just don't understand. I mean, My make it... Means nothing. I mean, make it a couple mil taller if you really feel the fucking need to, but not like... You know, a whole chunk taller. I mean, this is a tall paperback compared to a normal paperback, for example. But the other one is like a hardback size. Mm. And I wouldn't mind, I don't think the hardbacks are hardback size. I think they're the B size or whatever the fuck they're called. You know, the smaller ones. Yeah. Anywho, I just wanted to give you an update on that. So I've gone and bought the hardbacks now so I can get rid of my paperbacks. Like these size hardbacks yeah. yeah rather yeah. than these size hardbacks yeah so why they've gone and made the paperback of the context thing. this size rather than if we're doing size comparisons rather than this size yeah know? whereas the paperback for finley is donovan jumps size? the gun is that size i just uh, tell me where the logic is because i've got absolutely no idea i think that's the case anyway i'm fairly certain it is i quite like little hardbacks to yeah be fair. i do Especially if they're not too chunky as well. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're going to go because um, I want to edit this vlog and try and get it up before starting Polathon tomorrow. Jade's going to do start her vlog, I think, in the next 10 minutes when it's gone midnight. I'm excited to find out what my first Polathoner is going to be. I'm so excited for you to do the spinny. Spinny, spinny. Yes, I'm going to try and get this vlog edited so that it can go up on Tuesday for y'all and then obviously I'll be starting my my next vlog tomorrow which will be the beginning of Polathon and we'll see me saying goodbye to Jade on Tuesday so no. but for now she's still here well she's gonna stay here because it's her <laughs> house I'm gonna go home <laughs> you uh, that Finny boy? I don't have to go anywhere oh yeah oh. look it's Finn he's been asleep on my bed Oh look, it's Finn Butthole. Goodbye. He's just gonna go there now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's him. Still in frame. <laughs> Cuteness. Right, we're gonna go anyway. So I hope you have enjoyed this vlog. Chat to me in the comments down below. Let me know if you've also had the same issue with Finley Donovan, please, in the UK, because I just, I don't know if it's just me being unlucky or if that's the fucking case. I don't know. But um, yeah, anything to add? Happy Polathon! My brain filled that in with happy birthday. <laughs> I was like, who's fucking birthday? If it's your there? birthday, happy birthday! Same. I need help. <laughs> Professional help. <laughs> Would be nice. Um, yeah. See you in the next video. Bye for now.